Hello and welcome to this service for Ash Wednesday, which is going to be very different this year than it is in normal years because obviously on Ash Wednesday it becomes quite an intimate service in that people are touched by the Ash Cross that is placed on the forehead. Um, we can't do that this year because of social distancing, but I hope that you will still find this, this service meaningful. If you have been able to have one of our Lent bags, and I'm sorry for those of you who live a distance away who haven't had them, but if you have a Lent bag, inside you will find this card. And on this card, there is a cross. And this cross has actually been made out of ash made from last year's palm crosses. So it is um, authentic, if you like. Uh, it was mixed with PVA glue, if you're wondering how I did it. Um, uh, so if you'd like to have that card, perhaps close to hand. And um, the other thing that would be quite good if you had close to hand would be a small bowl and a jug of water. Um, we will use both later in the service. If you don't have them, it doesn't matter. But if you'd like to press pause now and go and get them, then that is fine too. We come from scattered lives to worship God. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness of sins proclaimed in the gospel and so hopefully grow in faith and in devotion to our Lord. I invite you therefore in the name of the church to the observance of a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer fasting and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. So let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what might you say? They said this to test him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. And once again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The older I get, the more profound Ash Wednesday, the Ash Wednesday service is, as returning to dust gets a lot closer. This year, the words will be particularly poignant as I think of those who are no longer with us because they have returned to dust. Whether it's friends or family, or one of the over 100,000 people who have died from COVID-19. Along with presiding at the Eucharist, ashing people is one of the deepest privileges of my priestly role. Lent is a time for many of us that challenges our understanding of our humanity as we seek to give up or take up something, to pause, to think, to reflect. In his book, Writing in the Dust, Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, recalls being in New York on September the 11th, 2001, a date that is now known as 9-11. The date that the Twin Towers collapsed in New York and that the Pentagon was attacked too. And at the end of the book, which is very short and well worth a read, he remembers the gospel reading we have just heard. And he wrote the following. When the accusation against the woman caught in adultery is made, Jesus at first makes no reply. 
but writes with his finger on the ground. What on earth is he doing? Commentators have had plenty of suggestions, but, and this is for Rowan Williams, there is one meaning that seemed obvious to me in the light of what I learned on that morning of 9-11. Jesus hesitates. He doesn't draw a line, fix an interpretation, tell the woman who she is and what her fate should be. He allows a moment in which people are given time, time to see themselves differently, precisely because Jesus refuses to make the decision and the sense that they want. When Jesus lifts his head, there is both judgment and release. So this is writing in the dust because it tries to hold that moment for a little longer, long enough for some of our demons to walk away. I wonder what you would have liked to have read if you had been there. Maybe it wouldn't have been writing, it might have been a sign or a symbol. But whatever it was that Jesus did, he took time. He stopped. He didn't answer immediately. He reflected. He put things into perspective before he replied. Lent is a time when we are allowed a moment, a time and a space to see ourselves differently and to allow words from God to become part of our lives. This Lent, may we have the courage to hold on to space, silence, uncertainty as we write in the dust. seek forgiveness and to allow God to be God. Amen. For our prayers of penitence, I am going to use the Coventry Litany, which of course has the response, Father, forgive. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class, Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and of nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the welfare and happiness of others. Father, forgive.
our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Father, forgive. The lust which dishonours the bodies of men, women and children. Father, forgive. The pride which leads ourselves, to, which leads us to trust in ourselves and not in God. Father, forgive. In your mercy, Lord, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. If you have the Ash Wednesday card that came in your Lent bag, then trace the shape of the cross as we pray. Truly, we are dust, and to dust we shall return. And truly, we are yours, loving God, and to you we shall return. May this Lent be for us a time of turning round and beginning again. Through its 40 days, help us to follow you and to find you in the discipline of praying and the labour of caring, in whatever way we deny ourselves and in whatever we set ourselves to learn or do. Help us to discover you in our loneliness and in community, in our emptiness and in our fulfilment, in our sadness and in our laughter. Help us to find you when we ourselves are lost. Help us to follow you on the journey to Jerusalem, to the waving palms of the people of hope. In their, to their rejection, to the cross and the empty tomb. Help us to discover new life amid the ashes of the old. Help us, carrying your cross, to be signs of your kingdom. Amen. Now, if you do have the bowl and the water, Pour some water gently into the bowl as we pray. Here is the water of life for everyone, everywhere. May this water surprise us and nourish us. May it cleanse our body and clean our conscience. Put out the fires of hatred and cleanse us from our sin. May our wrongdoings be washed away and your goodness flow through us. May waves of hope wash over us, calm our storms and bring us peace. Amen. And so we join with Christians across the world in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
This is love, not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. Christ, give us grace to grow in holiness, to deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May we go in peace to share with others the good news of God's gift of forgiveness. In the name of Christ. Amen. God bless. Have a good rest of the week. And I hope to see you all on Sunday.